And how's it feel to be a world champion? Oh my God. It's about damn time. Shoot, man. I feel like I always got close to like winning as an athlete, but it, it, it just never happened. The only time I ever really won big time was like me being a coach with my kids. That was like the only time, right? But winning as an athlete, that is, it's, it's a bigger, unbelievable feeling. I swear it's like undescribable, but to be a world champion, that right there was like, okay. And I, and I, and I remember telling myself too, even like my dad and everybody in the family, I always said like, if I got this ring, I was going to retire from competing. Is that shit going to happen? No. Cause I'm going back to season two. <laughs> so yeah, you. but it was, man, I just took that whole experience in, man. Like it was, it happened so fast. Like it was like, you got in, you got out because due to COVID and everything, Everything was very limited, you know, even though we didn't have spectators and everything like that um, there in the actual um, ESPN um, Worldwide Sports Center, um, we still had like the workers and everything like that of the competition, like wanting to go see us and whatnot. So like it was it was badass. I mean, shit, it was I was happy. So I got a ring. How's it feel to get it fitted? Oh, God. I felt like it's really going to hit me when I put that ring on. Like, for sure, for sure. They're going to um, have a ring ceremony and everything like that for us at the at the gym. I don't think we're going to have it at the gym. I think we're probably going to, like, go somewhere and whatnot. So, yeah. Once I put that ring on, it's going to be for sure. So, I had a lot of people doubt me. Like, they're like, you already... Why would people doubt you? How long have you been dancing? Because I'm old. They're like, dude, like, you already, like, give it up. Like, why are you going to go back to competing? I'm just like, watch. And then sure enough, it happened. Like, it was was crazy. Like, oh, God. And what what kind of dance? Like, what was the dance competition? The style? Was there any style? Any restriction? It was was open. um, It was open male hip hop. But we gave like different type of styles like in our performance. So we did like hip hop. We did some tutting. We did voguing. We did um, popping, and we did a little bit of uh, b boy stuff. So we just gave like everything like to the judges. Um, some of the other teams that were there, they were good, but they didn't have like a mix that we had. They were just like dancing to like one song. So like we went out there, we we like wreck shop like gave like sure. a remix of remix oh hell yeah like it was i'm glad I'm, I'm glad that you know i got to dance with the guys that i danced with and everything um jt my coach you know giving me um the opportunity to like go and like dance for his team and everything like that so that right there was you know we were all like we all wanted it like that's and i feel like that was part of the big success so this is what all your workout routines have been all about. Mm-hmm. Was leading up to this, mm-hmm. and how, what it was in Miami. What part of Florida? Your competition, Orlando. Orlando. Orlando, yeah. Was that your first time there as well? Mm-mm. The last time that I competed at Worlds was for cheer back in two thousand eight, my senior year. So for me to go back like almost like a decade later, like is and shit. dominate. Hell yeah, that's <laughs> good. Heck yeah, I loved it. It was it was a really really good experience. So I keep forgetting that I'm getting filmed. So I'm like trying not to. It's all good. Look at the camera. If you want to look at the camera, it'll probably be your mom watching this. Oh my God, my mom. <laughs> I know. I, w- I was telling everybody, I was like, yeah, I was like, I'm going to go meet up with Greg. And then Belgium was like, Greg, like how long has it been? I'm like, shit. It's a been a minute. Time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, everybody was like excited and everything. They're like, oh, we got to hear it and everything. So yeah. Is it, is it what you were expecting? I mean, the whole setup shit. I'm like, this is. Hmm. I'm about it. The last <laughs> the other podcast that I was on was with uh, one of my friends, Justin, and um, it was no setup like this. Honestly, like I mean, this whole. I felt like I'm on AS. What is it called? ASMR or whatever. Oh, I have. Oh, 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 oh public radio <laughs> or something like that. No, 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 no. It's like where they they eat like certain things or whatever, and they're like smacking in the microphone. Like I totally oh. feel like that shit right now. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I'm glad to give you the butterflies. Mm-hmm. Big time. So what makes up Jay? What makes me? Hmm. When did you start calling yourself Jay? Um, it's actually a funny story. Um, I was, what, like 19? And 
uh, Jesse, one of the guys that I used to cheer with, well, he was he was my teammate and he was also my coach and everything. And um, he just started to call me Jay. And everybody just caught on to that and everything. And then, you know, even like when I would go out, people would just call me the same thing. And then plus two, like it kind of followed me because on <laughs> MySpace, yeah. Ooh, MySpace. It, it, uh-huh, right. So that just followed me and I just went along with it. You know what I'm saying? So, so when I actually get to that personal level with people and I can actually tell them my real name, that's how you know, like you're in my good graces. But if not, then you're just gonna, <laughs> you're just gonna know me as Jay. Jay. But yeah. Um, but what makes me, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I'm just free spirited. Free spirited. Cr- yeah. Like I'm just, you know, I don't know how to explain it. I guess, like, you just have to be around in my presence to know, like, okay, like, this fool is with the shit. Like, he, like you don't even, like, this stuff that comes out of my mouth, I swear. Like, it's just, I'm just nothing but laughs. In other words, I mean, yeah. In other words, you just like to keep the people around you very happy. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and then I talk a lot of shit. So it's just like, I'm always going to clown on you. And you can clown on me all day. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But like, if you can't keep, if you really can't keep up with that, then I'm just like, yeah. You're... Not many people can take the jokes, though. Mm-mm. A lot of sensitive no, people. Too sensitive. I'm just like, mm-mm. that's why I'm, I'm just like, I'm going to give it to you straight up. Like, this is me like all day, every day. So like, if you can't handle this, then I mean... Do you think that comes from, like, all the years of dancing that you've done? That attitude? The mentality? Marbach. Marbach. <laughs> Marbach. That's Whatever. it. That's it. Marbach. John Jay. Hanson Jones. I mean, come on now. We, I mean, we grew up, what? General Valley? Old Pearsall? Mm. Girl. Sheesh. Old Pearsall. What? Good come times. On. Good times. But you, you know that... Listen to music and then dancing out to the beat of the music. Mm-hmm. It's like expressing yourself. Yeah, and then I also feel like the um, like that part of me comes from like my big brother Ruben and my dad. Like my dad was always the one to like go out by himself and everything like that. Like he was cool with everybody, and then like Ruben, you know. He made sure, yeah, like, I was close to my sisters and everything like that. You know what I mean? I always wanted to be around them. But, like, Ruben made sure that, like, he was the one to, like, be there to, like, rough me Mm -hmm. up and everything like that. I mean, come on now. Like, it's just, you know, football and everything like that. Riding on bikes, like, getting dirty. You know what I mean? Like, just fighting. Well, not, like, fighting like that. But, like, I mean, you know. Just brotherly fight. Brotherly, yeah, yeah. That asshole. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, yeah, dude, like, it's just my brother and my dad, like, big time. And then I feel like. I have Belgium's attitude straight up because Belgium's just like, she don't give a hoot. She's just like, no, like this is what's going to happen and this is the way it's going to go down. So like, yeah. So I guess that- They're very, I remember your sisters all very strong characters. Oh yeah, for sure. Argent, the Puerto Rican princess, and you got fucking Kim, <laughs> who was just that person who was like, well, what about me? Like, she did everything for you, but what about me? I'm like, you already Kim. Like, just, God. And don't forget, they're going to listen to this. Oh, oh, I know. <laughs> and I, <laughs> and they already know, dude, shit. I'm not, you know, one to hold back or anything like that. So, so yeah. How's your day going? It seems like it was pretty. Day, pretty. Was, day was going good. I went out last night. So I'm like, you know, you always go out. Mm-hmm. How do you party all the time? Honestly, I don't know how I do it. Like even like my coworkers, like at the salon and everything like that, they're like, how in the hell do you go out all night and then you can still make it to work? I'm like, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. Like, I don't know how I do it. I just. Just crazy. Pumped up on a adrenaline. Right. I'm like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to, you know, ride along with it. So I can't do it no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like break shoot. a hip. <laughs> now I know like when it comes to hangovers, I can't get over them as fast as I used to like a good ass nap, a good shower, a good meal. Now it's just like, damn, like I have to like really like <laughs> just take the whole day no, off. It's just shit. Two days at that shit. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, no, but yeah, but I mean, I had my food this morning, so I'm good. I didn't, yeah. I did nothing but vodka waters last night, so I'm good. But wow, I yeah. know that's a crazy man. Yeah, that's that's part of the healthy lifestyle. Beer wasn't doing it for me, dude. Cause shit, I was getting big. I was like, okay, you know what? Like, I gotta make a change. Like, mm-mm. like no, I can't do it no more. 
So yeah, beer is out of the question. You can always just starve yourself. Uh, it's something like that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do my meal preps out, eat after seven. So I mean, that's kind of like the same shit, you know. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, just know call, I mean? you just call it intermittent fasting. Uh-huh. So tell me about this new business venture that you're exploring. Okay, so. Um, I'm pretty, you know, well known to like doing like quinceaneras and sweet Mm -hmm. 16s and everything like that, you know, so like I'll go and um, I'll do like choreography for them. I do the whole presentation when it comes to like the introducing of the court and everything. Um, If the mother daughter, you know, want to dance or like the father daughter dance or whatever, like if they want like some surprise shit, like I'll, I'll, you know, do that. I do the waltz. I do the surprise dance. I do like everything. Uh, My best friend, Mark, I recently just made him my business partner. So... He's my makeup artist. So say, for instance, like if they don't have anybody to do makeup, mm-hmm. I already have somebody on deck. And then um, so he has like really good credentials. Like, I mean, Ulta, like, you know, he's a really, really good makeup artist. So like he's very, very well known in the industry. So I made him that. But the whole idea of everything is like I definitely want to have like um, like my own studio, like my own office and everything like that, you know to like take care of that like i want to have a barber on deck i want to have a dj on deck like i want to have like everything to where like i have a really good team say for instance like if i have um different type of um like gigs and i'm not able to do all of them then i want to hire a team of choreographers that i can trust and be like okay you go to this one you go to that one you know what i mean like i mix up my own music at the same time too so like i do all of that um, and then not to mention too, like, you know, it's not just going to be like sweet 16s and like, you know, quinceaneras and everything mm-hmm. like that. Like I definitely want to do more, um, choreography gigs, like for high schools and everything like that, you know, like a dance, like anything like that. You know what I mean? That, cause that, that's one thing that I'm known for in San Antonio where my dance is like, I dude, I'm telling you, I'd be like taking risks, like nobody's business. Like <laughs> I remember, um, when I used to coach with premier and cheer, um, we were doing a dance or whatever, and <laughs> the the song that we were dancing to in the beginning was Bounce Little Kitty. Mm-hmm. So the name itself already, you're just like, hot oh, dang it, man. And then Richard, my boss, he was like, really? Like, you're having the kids dance? I'm like, listen, it wins. Like, whatever. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, that's pretty much, you know, what I want to do. Um, I'm going to give myself till I'm 35 to, like, actually put the business out there and everything um because right now like i'm doing me you know what i mean like i'm competing again i'm still dancing uh i definitely want to audition to go on tour and everything so like i'm still young you know what i mean like i can i can still do it you know so yeah i just you have a lot of energy i do man i don't you have so much energy you just don't realize Mm -hmm. if you uh cut out the drinking you could start the business even sooner (laughs) I mean, the party, <laughs> the party scene is always going to be there. You know what I mean? Like, I, so I'm not even tripping. I'm just like, it's always going to be there, you know. But I'm good when I go out, you know. But back to your, your business venture. Man, it's, it really sounds, like, impactful that you want to, like, not only create a special event, but you want it to be memorable as well for mm-hmm. everyone that attends. Right. Like, yeah, and I know for a fact, like I have people that um, can back me up on this and everything, and then not to mention like people that can invest money into it and everything. So like I have like all of that set up and everything like that. Right now, would I'm just kind of going like through like the layout before like I start making moves and like actually like being like okay, well, like I want to look for a building. You know what I mean? Like I just because like I mean, dude, it'd be tough sometimes because like. When I do my quinceaneras and everything like that in the Sweet Sixteens, like I'm legit going to their house, like, and I'm either like teaching, like, um, outside in their front yard or their backyard, but like I want to be able to like have like that studio to mm-hmm. where they can actually go in, see themselves dance in a mirror and everything like that, and actually know like okay, like this is what he's expecting us to look like and how he wants us to move, because man, sometimes it be it's teaching these kids like there's they can do TikToks all day every day but when it comes to me teaching them they're like shine shit and i'm just like just let it out like it you're fine you know what i mean <laughs> but i have to make these practices close sometimes because these parents will get up in there and i'm like parents no like you are making your kid feel uncomfortable because you're watching them like just go you're gonna see the performance anyways at the party so i mean like why you gotta be here they're like oh you're just being rude i'm like again practices you're paying are, for this practices are closed get out <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no wonder why you would want your own studio. Yeah. 
Have you tried even just uh? Because I've seen sometimes those being done at like parks, like out in the sheltered oh my parks. God. I don't know. I haven't done that yet. I mean, when I was uh, working at Premier, like you know, the last couple of gigs that I had, like I would have them go to the um, the gym. Mm -hmm. So like you know, we would they would rent out the space and everything like that. You know, so like it was really good and everything. Um, but yeah, you know, just I'm just. Like I want them to come to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like this, I'm is, saying. this is the studio. This is where you're at. You're in air conditioning. We don't got to be outside if it's raining. Like no, like you're here. You know what I mean? So, cause man, I'm I will never get the last gig that I did. We practiced in the pouring rain. I mean, we had that little itty bitty shelter and everything like that. But I'm just like <laughs> y'all. Like I'm sorry. Like it's, this is miserable. It's <laughs> we're all hot. We're tired. Like I mean, come on. Like it's just yeah. So you got what? What's what kind of studio would you look for though? Mm, I definitely want to have the studio and a location to where I know I can gain business. Because I mean, who knows? Maybe like you know, this you know choreography gig and everything like that can turn into like my own gym. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody has always been asking me that, like, when are you going to start your own gym? And I'm just like, that's, gosh, that's. It's a big step, you know what I mean? But I'm, I well, have. It's not that big. It, it's not that big, but you know what I'm saying. But like, I just, I, I have, you know, the knowledge. I have the experience. Like, I, I know what to do. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, oh god, owning a program like that. It's just, it's a lot of work. It, it's not as easy as it looks. Like, it's oh, well, nothing ever is. It's just, yeah, man. Just man, I'm just like, I'll just be the coach of your program. <laughs> what, what? What looks good, what takes time to look good or be good, right, is like hard. Mm -hmm. it takes a lot of hard work. Oh yeah, for sure. And like, especially like for how small San Antonio is, it's just like okay, like is he gonna crash and burn or is he really gonna make this happen? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's always people like, especially like in the cheer and dance world, they're like always like looking like okay, like. How is it going to happen? Like, how is he really going to... You know what I'm saying? Like, it's I, just... I don't even understand that world. You're going to have to, like, just elaborate, like, the cheer world here. I mean, everybody's supportive of each other. You know what I'm saying? That's what I like about the industry. Like, nobody's not shady or anything like that. I mean, everybody's just like, hey, you did good at competition. Now we saw your team. Did you do that? I'm like, yeah. So, <laughs> just don't take my kids. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. So given everything that you say, would you consider yourself an entrepreneur? Hmm. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I pretty much do my own thing, so yeah, I make things happen. I guess you know. I mean, so if you wanted to expand on your your business, your skill skill set. Mm -hmm. Where would you like to take it? Where would you want to go? Out of San Antonio. <laughs> out of San Antonio. <laughs> like, out. Like, just out. So, what's holding you here, then? Well, I mean, I had a plan, you know, of getting out of San Antonio. Before COVID even hit, like, I had a job already ready for me at a gym, uh, Apex, up in Houston. You know, like... Um, I had already like had like a big time job like lined up there. Not just with the gym, but like my other, you know, big boy job and everything. And um, I was going to go audition for the Rockets, for the launch crew. And um, if I didn't make it, then I would go to Dallas to go try out for Rhythm and Blues for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, because it's just like um, like Spurs. Like with Spurs, like you have the silver dancers and you had team energy. So like it's the, it's the, the same thing, but for the NFL. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, I would love to have that experience because, I mean, it's not basketball. You know, it's like football like it's yeah. crazy you know it's what like I mean? huge stadiums oh hell yeah yeah and um i'm pretty sure they get paid more too so i'm just like um I'm, maybe a couple dollars yeah i'm down for sure <laughs> the photo shoots the merchandise everything right so um yeah and like and then covid happened and everything just got put to a stop because you know the gyms and everything like that were affected you know what i'm saying you know the kids like it's just you know everything just got put to a stop my mom was like miko you're really gonna move i'm like yeah Cause like, you know, what I want to do, especially like when it comes to the professional world of dance and everything, I mean, it's very limited here in San Antonio. Like every, like once they took away, 
it was like they were taking everything away little by little. So like first it started off with um, the Rampage Ice Girls, right? Um, the hockey team. So that went away, right? And then I was dancing for the WNBA for Stars. Well, they got bought out and they went to Vegas and everything. And then they got Man. rid of Star Squad. Yeah. And then from there it went to Spurs. So like when they you know let us go i mean we thought that team energy we thought we were the first ones to go we never thought that they were going to get rid of the chaps over 25 years like that's crazy and then they brought up the hype team and i just you know i wanted to dance like i didn't if i was going to cheer again then i would just go back to cheer but like i really just wanted to dance but like dancing for the spurs though was like a big time experience like that right there was like the best times I've ever had because I took the time to step away from coaching. Yes. A lot of my kids were not happy about it. They were just like, well, damn, like you're not going to be there anymore. And I'm like, I mean, I'll still be around. I'm just not going to coach. You know what I'm saying? But I've noticed like, you know, a difference um, when I like step away from that world and I like do something for me, then it's just like, damn, like you, it's almost like I'm a late bloomer. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? So it's just like, damn, dude. But because, yeah, and then everything just stopped. And what? It stopped mainly because you were dancing from the Spurs? No, 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 no. Like, me moving out of San Antonio, like, it just stopped mm-hmm. because of COVID. You oh. know what I'm saying? So, like, I, yeah, like, yeah. lost all of that. But I've been doing my research and everything. And, then, you know, me, like, winning worlds and everything like that. Like, that's, like, something big to, like, put on my resume. Especially oh, the is. fact that, heck, yeah. Like, I mean, that's, like... You're competing against the world. You know what I'm saying? It's not just like teams here in the U.S. You're getting a ring. That's pretty freaking exciting. Hell yeah. That ring is... Mm, and I got it on my marriage ring. So what what, what is it going to be on the ring? It says uh, world champion on it. And then there's like a diamond. And then, yeah, it's like a like a band. Nice. Dude. You know, so hell yeah. I'm definitely excited. Like I cannot wait to get that ring because I'll just be like, ah, like... This is it. You know what I mean? Until I find a man that can replace that world champion. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Sidetrack. Did you know that San Antonio just elected its first gay councilman? Just mm. yesterday? Last night? That's great. Yeah. I'm not really into politics, but that's great. I mean, I was just seeing you knew. I was just seeing you knew. That's yeah, yeah, all. yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'll hear it later on from like my mama Courtney, and she'll probably like mm. let me know all the business and everything like that about it. So, and then, and since I, I don't know, I just read it was Pride Month too. That was a new one to me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, whoa, so Pride Month, Pride Month for you, whatever that means. What it means is. It's our time. <laughs> it's everybody's time. Everybody's time. Everybody's time, yeah. Everybody's part of the rainbow, whether you know it or not. Everyone Are you? Is. Yeah, everyone. I'm just kidding, Greg. <laughs> the rainbow's humanity. Yeah, I chew that. It is. We're all different shades and different colors. I'm just very tan right now. <laughs> burn. We're all burned. Enjoying that sun while we have it. I mean, shoot. Rainy weather sucks. I mean, I really feel like right now Mother Nature is being very homophobic. She's like, no. <laughs> She's like, I'm just going to rain. <laughs> so oh, you said now that it's post-COVID, mm-hmm. you want to move things out. Mm-hmm. So Houston, Dallas, are those opportunities still on the table? Or are they- Yeah, it's still there. I just got to make the move and just go for it. You know, I got to like um, look at audition dates and everything like that. But mm-hmm. like, dude, if I can like legit like get on a tour man is there anything internationally um, i know i know borders but down the road when borders are open and everything is i don't know that's actually a good question because sometimes international has like different interests and sometimes mm-hmm. dancing probably dancing is probably huge around the world right yeah i don't know i never really looked into it like that i know there's one dance program that's like the shit and like she uh her name is paris so she's like one of the choreographers that i look up to did you get to see the halftime show with like shakira and j-lo mm-hmm. okay that whole j-lo performance she did all that choreography wow like that shit was bad like i know all that choreography by heart i actually did that tiktok that everybody was like you need to do it you need to do it i'm just you have like, a tiktok yeah i don't have a tiktok 
What, what's your TikTok screen name? Uh, Sir Caldeon. Sir Caldeon. Mm -hmm. Nice. I have a lot of videos of me messing with my dad. <laughs> like, my dad, like, <laughs> I don't know how he puts up with my shit, I swear. Uh, he just loves you. Yeah. He's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, shoot. So, yeah. So, again, what's holding you here? You know, I wish I knew. I guess because, like, right now, opportunities are starting to open up down here for me. Like, I don't know what's crazy. Like, it was, like, in the beginning, like, there was, it was, like, after Spurs, it was just, like, eh, like, that's Boy. it. Right. And then now, you know, that I went back into the, you know, competitive world of dance and everything, and then I got a world's title, you know, underneath my belt and everything. It's just, like, now it's just... Again, more late, doors are open. Late blooming, dude. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. I'm just like, and I'm not mad at it at all. You know, like I have a lot of people that support me and everything. So I'm just, I'm going to stick it out around here for just a little bit longer. And then that's when I'm really going to start, you know, because I mean, Houston was the move, but I mean, like, who knows? Maybe like I want to go to like Florida, you know, to go coach like with Top Gun or something like that, or like go to California. You know what I mean? Like, it's just... I don't know yet. Right now, it's just like all in a process right now, you know. Because and then and then too, like you know, I want to start this business and everything like mm -hmm. that. So it's just like where you, where you want to put roots down now is the next question. Like because when you start that business, you're starting roots. Mm -hmm. So do you want to stay in San Antonio longer? Or do you want to start roots somewhere else? Mm -hmm. Remember, that's the other thing you got to think about a business. Yeah, because then you're you're there for like another five years at least. Unless you plan on selling, ditching and selling in a year. Shit. Damn it, Greg. You're like putting too much shit in my head right now. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to. I'm like, y'all for, forgive me. Uh, I'm, you know, had a long night last night. So. It's all good. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, but sidetracked though, y'all, one thing about Greg that I loved about him back in the day, like when we were like young, is Greg always had the badass toys, dude. Uh -huh. The fucking, <laughs> the Power Rangers and shit like that. Like he had all the badass shit, dude. And like, oh my God, your mom would get so mad at us. She'd be like, Greg, Josh, <laughs> cool it. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Uh -huh. I was but, spoiled. I'm sorry. I was spoiled. Man, I'll never forget when I went to Schlitterbaum with your fucking, with your, with you and your parents, dude. That was fun. And then I remember we were like in your, um, in that white van. Oh yeah, that you had yeah. Like, and I remember we were eating because it was raining hard that day. And mm -hmm. then we went out to the pool and like we went out and we did all that shit or whatever. So good times, good oh, times. Wow, that's good memories. I haven't even remembered those in a long time. Damn, Greg, where the hell you been at? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> India. Right. <laughs> right. Just fucking just, you no. know, catching flights and shit. Ooh, I wish. No, but oh, those are good times, man. Mm -hmm. Vista Valley. Play, going out and playing in the field. Or <clears throat> Me having the biggest crush on your brother, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> God, uh, that boy is still finding me. Okay. Uh, he's in Houston. That Too I know, far. That I know where I'm going then, <laughs> shit. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're probably scared. Yeah. He's all good. He's all good. So what is it about San Antonio that makes you want to leave but makes you want to stay? What are the things that want to push you away? Well, one, in San Antonio, it's affordable. I mean, shit. Yeah, like, but look at it. Look at all around you. Why is it affordable? Look how cheap everything looks. Right. You get what you pay for, essentially. Right, and I'm not mad at it, you know. But I don't know. I just... My, 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 like my friends, dude, like I love my friends so much. And like lately, you know, I've, um, took the time to like get to know people. Cause me, I was very just like, I don't want to talk to nobody. I was just to myself, you know what I mean? Talk to the same five people, but like, I actually, the same five people, but now like I'm giving people chances now, you know what I'm saying? And I really felt like, Open you know, your heart. Yeah, unfortunately. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, it's San Antonio, I just it's where I'm from, dude. Like it's just I you know, even though like when we said, Oh god, San Antonio is just San Antonio, like but deep down I'm just like, nah, like I mean, you know, if you know the right people, San Antonio is fun. 
But if you just really don't, then Sun is always just like blah. It's just like, you know. But I mean, I don't know. I love San Antonio. What what are things that you would like to see changed here? Um, because obviously, not not just in a in a business aspect, is there not enough like skill set for like to expand on your ventures such as dancing? But there's other like reasons why like moving out of San Antonio would be I don't know beneficial compared. To like stain? Mm. No? Dude, you totally have me lost. I'm like trying to think. I'm like, uh. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. Um, forgive me. I went to Jay for a year, so I think that's no, awesome. No, it's all good. <laughs> um, I don't know. What I would like to see different in San Antonio is just, oh my God. If you're going to start a project with like roads and shit, please get it done. <laughs> just please, because as it is. San Antonio, when it comes to driving, oh my God. Like, yeah, you, you saw my story mm -hmm. yesterday. I was so pissed. I'm like, it's just drizzle. But like, everybody is like going so slow, dude. I'm just like, just get in, get out. Because I'm like, if you drive too careful like that, what's going to happen? You're going to get in a wreck. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, San Antonio, do better. Use your blinkers, please. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, so I don't know. Like, I've never really thought about it. Like, what needs to change in San Antonio? Because, I mean, I feel like we have everything here, if that makes sense. What would you say about education? I mean, how about this? Let me show you this real quick. Oh, God. Imagine if every school was like that, had, like, that type of um, unionship and discipline, all the schools, and that was the principal leading the whole entire school. Shit, that's me. <laughs> like, imagine that. Like, imagine that's in Japan. That's mm. Japanese schools. Imagine if we were doing that here in schools like that today. What would that do? I mean, I really honestly feel like if we had something like that down here, that'd be badass because, I mean, it would show that there are people out there that care you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, like, to have everybody in line like that, hell yeah, dude. Because, I don't know, like, I always look back on, like, when I've, when I've coached. I've coached many different kids. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking about, you know, to ones that really don't have good relationships with their parents. You know what I'm saying? Or they're just troubled. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, like, I always manage to, like, get through to them. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, I wasn't fucking the best child in the world because i mean shit i would throw my medicine in the trash my day i wanted to take my red and my mom would get pissed you know what i mean so like <laughs> oh my god and all of a sudden you get all these fucking phone calls and shit like that from school like well your, your son is laughing i'm just laughing in class like what the hell like i'm not even You're really just doing bored anything. man right? wasn't your interest <laughs> um but yeah dude like i dude if we had some shit like that here like that would be and that's what i'm saying actually. imagine if you had that like in school, you're like, oh, crap, not only do I have dance to look for, but we dance before school and we dance after school. Mm -hmm. I just feel like now it's just, I don't know. I just, I, I look back on like how school is now and it's like nothing compared to when I was going to school. I, I was substituting for a little bit, man. It's scary. It's scary how disrespectful everyone is with one another. I would have been like, sit your ass down and do your homework. Because <laughs> we can... It could either go good or go bad. <laughs> but then again, though, I don't know. Like, that's another thing, too. Like, I definitely would like, you know, oh, my God, there's so much shit that I want to do. God, late blooming again. Um, hashtag late blooming, everybody. Hey, okay. we're all, sometimes right. we're all late bloomers. I, I definitely, like, would love to go to school because I would love to be a counselor for kids. High school kids. Okay, and you're probably thinking like, damn, dude, like that's like, hell no. Them high school kids do not scare me. I mean, I've been coaching for over <laughs> like 19, 18 years. You know what I'm saying? Like I've done seen it all. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I would love to be like that, that person to be like, dude, come on. Like, why are you doing this? Like, you know, damn well, it's not going to benefit you later on the long run. So like, why do it now? You know what I'm saying? Like, just to like, um, you know, be on that like homey level to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not. Like, cause that's one thing that I've noticed about like kids nowadays. It's like, 
you can't be too headstrong by being like a like an authority. You know what I'm saying? You got to like kind of get down to their level in some crazy way and just like have understanding with them. You know, because if not, if you're just like, well, you need to like, they're just going to be like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm not going to listen to you. You know what I'm saying? But it's just all about, you know, getting in contact with them, with their inner feelings, just to, you know, not be so headstrong with them sometimes, you know, but again, school wise, I don't know, man. Like I just give, give the kids better food. First of all, like I'd be seeing what the <laughs> hell they be eating at lunch. And I'm like, how do y'all even like my nephews and everything like that? Like when they're in elementary, I'm like, how in the hell does this even like, like fill you up, dude? Because I'm a shit back in the day. What's with terrorists, man, they had food on food on food. Like, I was full. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was like nachos or, or lasagna day or something like that. And let me tell you, the steak fingers were my shit. Sop it up with the mashed potatoes. <laughs> Bruh. Man, th- this is how old school I am. I remember, and everybody trips out when I tell them this, but I remember, um, like, when I was in kindergarten, we didn't have milk cartons. Like, it, it, it was oh, the plastic bags the plastic bags yeah. of milk it looked yeah. like a fucking boob implant you know what i'm and saying then, and then if you stabbed it too hard you went through it the went bag. through right just a mess dude <laughs> but yeah like you know what i'm saying and then um i also found out where the breakfast pizza is from where's it from it's from that fucking truck that you would always see it's like a beige truck with like a swan on it do you remember that mm-hmm. shit yeah okay so they're the ones that sell that pizza and I remember I would piss off the lunch ladies because I'd be buying like three of them at a time. They're like, why do you want to get three? I'm like, because a bitch is hungry. <laughs> like, We only get it <laughs> once a week, dude. Like every Wednesday, I think it was. <laughs> Dang. But yeah, but school-wise, again, feed the kids better food. Honestly, I get it. Like I'm not saying like, you know, make it obese or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? But like, I don't know, dude. It's It's, yeah. And bring dodgeball back. I forgot about that. Hell, man. I knew that when I, when I was going to Anson Jones, I knew when they said, all right, everybody get dressed and everything like that and meet us at the rec center, I already knew what time Dude, it was. I got a better thought. What if they don't bring back dodgeball? What if instead they just replace it with bumper cars? Just go in there and just bump it your frustration out with everybody then i'm picking up my kid when he has that fucking period and he's not gonna go there <laughs> i'll make his ass go run do something shit fucking bumper cars the hell's wrong with you what <laughs> safe bumper oh cars. okay but the money to put into it though i mean okay for real what there's probably a bunch of abandoned stuff you just make just fix it and that's how people get hurt and blown up okay i mean shit be right, my, bring back dodgeball bring back dodgeball bring please. back dodgeball that right there is just like, you know, I'm like, okay. Because the one thing I loved about dodgeball, dude, is I'm like, okay, you want to call me gay and shit like that in the hallway? I'm going to beat your ass with this ball. Watch. And we'll see <laughs> if you got something to say to Were you. Were you bullied at all? You know what? Honestly, I never really had an issue with bullying at all. Because I was, one, when I was in school, I never really hung out with the gay guys. Ever. I was just like to myself. And if anybody were to ever approach me, then I had something to say. It was like I turned into Ruben automatically. Like, it's just like, well, what's up? And like, you you have all this shit to say, but yeah, your home, your girlfriend over here is hanging out with me more than she's hanging out with you. So it's just like, what's up? Like, you know what I mean? And then um, I was like a popular mm-hmm. guy in school. You know what I'm saying? Like, Well, you're on the cheer squad, man. Yeah. You know, and like, dude, when I went to Warren and I left Jay, that was like the best fucking thing ever but i remember my mom dropped me off at that school she was like that's it this is it you're not going nowhere else and i'm looking at the school like fuck okay <laughs> this is a fucking college campus here dude shit you know what i'm saying like they didn't even they didn't really didn't have they, they didn't have portables fucking had other extra buildings and shit and i'm just like all right here we go dude but like yeah and then like i was always cool with everybody you know what i'm saying and i think the reason why i never really got bullied as much is because you know yeah like i, I i'm gay and everything like that but i never I knew when to act out and I knew when to just kind of mm-hmm. keep it in tight and keep, keep it intact. You know what I'm saying? Cause I mean, yeah, you know, like it's being gay, you know, it's, I just feel like there, people are so stereotypical nowadays. Like, Oh, well you need, they're going to act like this. Like, no, cause I still get questioned every day. Like they're just like, I didn't even think you were gay. You don't look gay at all. And I'm like, yeah, 
I'm just an average person. Like, I'm just regular. I don't mm-hmm. need to fucking be like, hey, what's up, man? I'm Jane. I'm gay. I don't need to do all that. It's just like, if you ask, I'll tell. You know what I'm saying? But that's, you know, what also makes Jays. How, how do you feel about the other flamboyant ones? They're funny. <laughs> again, they really don't get off to me as much because, again, I come off so headstrong and I'm so mm-hmm. blunt and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? And that's when, you know, they can't really take the the way that I play around and shit like that because people are like, are you fucking serious? I'm like, no, dude. Like, I'm I'm playing. Like, I'm just, you're, you're, you're good. You're fine. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. But there's some other flamboyant gay guys that can be messy, dude. Messy. Like, they're just with the shit. Like, they just. I don't think I want to know. No, you don't want to know. Because <laughs> that's how fights happen and shit. <laughs> I'm like, weren't y'all just talking shit about each other the other day? Now you're our friends. I'm just like, okay, all right, cool. You know, but they yeah. must be married. Must be shit. <laughs> um, but no, I don't have a problem with them. I mean, they're cool. So, I mean, I feel like everybody, you know, I feel like the the gay community here in San Antonio, um, it's not bad. I feel like, you know, again, it's all about knowing the right people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I get, like they always say, you are who you chill with. You know what I'm saying? So. You just got to be careful. In other words, <laughs> literally, <laughs> got to be careful because word travels fast, dude. I'm telling you, man. They're like, yeah. They're like, weren't you fucked up the other day at the bar and everything like that? I'm like, huh? You don't even remember. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, I was with my mom, Courtney. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, man. So, back to all your dancing. Mm. Wait, what? Sapporo. What is that? It's a beer. Oh. It's a Japanese beer. Oh, I got Japan on my arm, actually. Oh, did you go? No, this is actually on my bucket list. Okay, so the, my whole arm explains a story. Okay, what's the Japanese story? So the tiger... Okay, so first of all, strength and courage, right? Mm-hmm. So that right there is what really played a big part in my life because I was in a relationship for five years. Okay, um, and I had our date right here, and I was like, you know what, I want to get rid of it, right? So the tiger represents me going to a different gym. I was uh, at another, I was at a gym that I was working there for like five years. Like I was there for like a very, very long time, right? Like I think I started working there when I was like, uh, because I started doing choreography camps and everything that with Coach Kim when I was like 14, 15. We would go to Divine. Uh, Divine High School, Divine Meta School. Ooh. We would go to Dehennis. That Ooh. was like up in that area. Yeah, dude. Like we would wake up. That's every- a drive, man. Yeah, dude. And like we would be there all damn day. We we start camp like at nine o'clock and we would leave like at four, wow. three. Yeah. So we're like trying to teach them. Like we had like a like four days with them. So we were like actually it's a whole week and we would like go and we would try to teach them everything we teach them sideline cheers dances spirit dances a camp routine like we did all that so I did. It was like 14, 14 or 15, either one of those years. And then, um, yeah, I was there with the program for a while. And then um, all the originals, they were starting to leave. And I was like the last one. So I was just like, okay, like it's it's my time to go. Like it's, you know, like I want to um, go back to a gym that I used to be with years ago. And like where I first started my cheerleading career and everything like that. Right. So that right there, the tiger represents me going to a different gym um dream and passion and the bamboos is representing spurs so that right there is like you know the bamboos is like me going through like everything you know all the obstacles all the auditions and everything like that you know to make it to that top that that spot right um this right here uh this is the city of shinjuku in japan that's mm-hmm. like one place that i really really want to go to what because there's just so much there like it's just a what, what is the lure there Huh? What is your lure there? What what is luring you there? Like, what is it about it that wants you want to go there? It's what what it reminds me of is like an upgraded version of the pearl. <laughs> that that's that's just the only way that I could explain it. You know what I'm saying? But the city of Shinjuku right here, this represents like San Antonio, right? Uh-huh. And then this is me, the ninja assassin, all the way of like me looking down at like everything that I went out for, right? And then the samurai just represents like, you know, they stay loyal and they fight for what they want. You know what I'm saying? So that right there, like just, you know, explains my whole story. That's beautiful. Yeah. 
people think I'm crazy because I tell my, I would uh, tell my um, my tattoo artist, I'm like, this is what I want to do, whatever you want. And he's like, all right, bet. And yeah, that's how it came out like that. I never thought that I would ever have a sleeve, which is crazy. And then of course, like I have like my religious piece because my middle name is Jude. So I got St. Jude on my arm and then he drew out an angel wing right behind it. So yeah. Nice. I know, right? Where the hell am I? <laughs> you're here doing a podcast. <laughs> right. That's where you're at. Never forget. This is the one true reality that we all have and share. Literally. How's that? What? Uh, like, uh, like this is the one reality that we all truly share with one another. Life is what you make it. Yeah. Literally. I heard the, I, I read this crazy quote earlier that we aren't human beings with thoughts. We are thoughts with human beings. Like, we, we are just the thoughts. Like, our, our, our real existence are our thoughts. Mm. And the human being is just a shell. Like, the thoughts do what the... Are you or the, the body does what the thoughts do, want you, to do. Are you from the Matrix? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you, Greg. Uh, yeah, that's actually a good analogy, though, honestly. Because, I mean, you know, thoughts, yeah... But it depends on what type of thoughts, though, because, like, dude, Yeah, thoughts, sometimes. If you well, get too much in your fucking head, ching, yo, man. Yeah, you can go crazy. Why not? Hell yeah, shit. So, Josh, you got your own business. How can people get a hold of you for any of this, for your choreography skills uh, or dance? Um, They can look at my social media, uh, Instagram. You know what I mean? Say, like, have, like, um, all, like, they could either get in contact with me there, um... I don't know. Like, the way that I get booked for these gigs is, like, just word of word mouth. Word of mouth. Yeah, they're like, hey, like, you know, he has this going on. You know, you should go get in contact with him and whatnot. Uh, most of the core argument gigs that I've done have all been with, like, girls that I've coached before. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then it's also, like, you know, they're friends of friends and everything. Um, I know I have... Um, Another one lined up um, pretty soon. She's going to get in contact with me. But she was actually one of the girls that was in the court that I just recently did. And um, she was like, yeah. She was like, you used to coach me when I was little. And I was like, shut up. I was like, where? She's like, terrific. And I was like, oh, because, dude, honestly, it's so crazy. Because now it's like when I go out and everything, like I see my kids. And I'm like, you guys need to stop growing up please like they're graduating college they're doing all this stuff or whatever you know what i'm saying but like yeah that's another thing too like i want to show my kids that every person that i've ever coached like it's never too late i mean look at me like i'm 31 you know what i'm saying i went back i came out of retirement went into the competitive world and i got a world champ I, I'm, I'm a world champion so it's just like what's stopping you Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't give me no sad excuse. Oh, I'm too busy. Okay, I work two jobs. That didn't stop me. I mean, I made the time for it, you know? So I was tired as hell, but it was all worth it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, cool. yeah. So, so, yeah, just word of mouth or anything like that. I have a Facebook page where um, it has all my athletes. It has coaches. It has judges, my family, and everything like that. So, I mean, they is, can just Is there a name down. behind this business? Or no name yet? Mm, no name yet. I mean, I have a couple ideas, but I'm not going to reveal it yet. All right. Just throw out your, your social media names. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my Instagram is Sir underscore Gaudio. So that's S-I-R underscore C-A-U-D-I-L-L-O. And then my Facebook page is Josh Gaudio. And that right there has like, you know... Everything that I've ever done, every, you know, um, athlete I've coached and everything like that. Pictures and everything. So, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. It was beautiful to see you again. Dude, I know, <laughs> man. God, just. So long. So long. Right. Like, I mean, damn. It's like, where the, where the hell did time go? Like, <laughs> shit. But, like, when I was, like, looking at your Instagram and you're going to all these places, I'm like, fuck, Greg. Like, the hell? Like, shit. Like, Well, I want to get back there. Yeah. You know? Whenever Where, this is over. Where's your next... Um, I want to go back to Australia. Just want to go back there. Like live there? Mm -hmm. What made you want to live there in the first place? Oh, it's... I don't know. Just beaches everywhere. <laughs> There's beaches everywhere. The lifestyle. Just... It's more open and less people. It's more open but less people. Okay, I can, I can see that. It's like continental U.S., 
mm-hmm. but like 25 million people. How was that less people? <laughs> You, oh wait, you're talking about here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. There's, there's 350 million people in this country, and look at the mass exodus that's leaving California and coming here. Why is that? Cheap. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, California is really expensive, and everything's gonna get really expensive here. Why? Because they're moving here. Oh God, guys. <laughs> yeah. I am over the gas prices, dude. I'm like, God I'm dang. Just get an man. electric car. Huh? Just get an electric car. I'm sorry. I love my Dodge Dart. <laughs> that that car has got me in so much trouble for speeding. It's not even funny, dude. Guy, when I told my dad, I was like, "Yeah, I want to get a Dodge Charger." He goes, "Equal let you now, Joshua." He was like, "You're gonna get another ticket." And I'm like, "Well, damn, Dad, I got my driving from you. So what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault, if anything." <laughs> so yeah. Is there any uh, shout outs you want to give out? Anyone that you want to dedicate? Mm. For everything that you've experienced or been able to do throughout your whole life so far i would definitely want to do a shout out to my sister belgium yeah she i will never forget when um they first wanted to put me in cheerleading right because they were just like okay like he needs to go and like he need he needs to go do it and I remember um, we were trying to look for this gym and we could not find it. And Belgium was like, no, like we're going to find this gym and he's going to go there. And then it was like in a back area. Like, I don't know. Like it, it looked like a fucking warehouse. It was crazy. Uh, it was called uh, the Wolverines. And um, yeah, we went and then we saw it. And then that's when I was just like, okay, you know what I mean? And then of course, you know, I started there first as stepping stone that I went to TCCA and jets and all of them and then um yeah dude uh for sure belgium yeah because without like without belgium making that extra step Mm -hmm. and actually making it happen i would not be where i am today and then like you know yeah dude like just my brother like my pretty much like my family dude because like i mean we were all dancers we were all cheerleaders except for my brother my brother was in football but like i mean we all like did something you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying and because my dad was a dj and he you know expanded us to like you know knowing all different types of music and everything like that you know what i'm saying like that like really like opened the doors for a lot of us you know what i'm saying but you know i'm the one in the family that just like went above and beyond yeah you became world champion yeah but I know, like, the day that I move out of San Antonio, like, that right there is going to hit my family. They're going to be like, what the fuck? Like, why are you leaving? You know what I mean? So. To become a beautiful butterfly. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Jay. Of thank course. you for coming yeah, on. Thank you for having me. And, like, this is fucking legit. I mean, this microphone, this, this thank whole you. room and everything like that. I've been looking at that mosquito for, like, the longest fucking time. <laughs> I'm, just, you know, I'm just like, 